Welcome back, guys. Thank you uh, for listening in to another episode of the ADH Dads. Uh, we got a very special recording for you today. I'm very excited to have Sir Jason Palmer with us. He is the host of a podcast called Foster Care Nation. Him and his wife run that, and I'm very excited to kind of dive in with him and get his story and see what foster uh, dadding looks like, because I am always interested to talk to other men who are not bio dads like myself. I, I know I've mentioned this a couple times, but I'm a stepdad to three kiddos. So Jason has, you know, 1,300 kids. So I'm really excited to hear about what life looks like for him, man. So welcome, Jason. How are you doing today? It's 1,301 today. Ah, oh, all right. <laughs> you know, I just had a similar conversation with a guy at church this morning about that, that something you just mentioned right there that I'm pretty passionate about. Way back in the day when my wife and I first got together, um, she already had a little boy when I met her. He was two, and his dad had bounced and just decided not to be a dad anymore. And um, and I had showed up, and he knew me. He just called me dad. The guy I worked for, John Reeser, was a real good guy. And John asked him one day, he said, well, what, what, is, what do you call him? Do you call him your stepson or just your son? I'm like, he's, look, this kid has made it into the, the group of people that I will kill to protect. He's just my kid. He's my son. And we just, it's son. It's, it's too simple. And, and he, he goes, that's, that's the way it should be. That, and that's kind of the first time I ever even thought about the question. And today with all the different kids we have in our house. Okay. So my oldest daughter was legally speaking, biologically speaking, she was my wife's half sister. Okay. She was a year and a half older than our oldest son. They shared a mom and she dealt with, so she, still, this has been 20 something years later, still dealing with addiction. And this little girl grew up in my house. She went to school from my address. She ate my food. We put clothes on her back. When she cried because she was hurt or sad, it was on my knee. That was my little girl, right? So that, that, was, my, that was my oldest of kids. And then my wife had the, the, a son of hers that, that was, I was a stepdad. And then my wife and I had a bio son together and so there was a bio kid. And since then, we've adopted several kids. We've adopted four kids through the foster system. We have two more that look like they're inbound here pretty soon. Um, we're getting to the place where they'll probably be adopted kids soon. And we've had close to 30 kids come through our house through the foster system. And I'm going to tell you, the truth is, is this is my kid. I don't care about all the other labels. Bio step half. I have a... My dad and my stepmom raised her grandson because her daughter was really sick and they raised that made Timmy like I, he was like my double half step nephew in law. I don't know. It was just Timmy, right? Like I, I can't see putting that much work in and identifying what sort of weird biological relational relationship you have with somebody. This, yeah. These are just my kids. Yeah. You know, that's interesting because I, um, you know, I, I faced a lot of uh, boundaries in my stepdadding journey of what is the proper term that I can use, you know, as a, as a bonus dad, uh, you know, when I talk about the kids, you know, our, the bio dad is still in the picture for our, our kids here, you know, he's, he's active and, and, and takes them for every other weekend. And, you know, so there was a lot of boundaries that I had to navigate of not wanting to step on his toes and using the word dad and, you know, in certain scenarios, but I feel the same way you know i had to kind of go into this relationship and the mindset of i have to love these kids like i would love my own you know and uh, again going back to what i was saying and talking to you and why i'm interested in talking to you and how you share your love with all these kids that that aren't yours is just a, a fascinating story and perspective to me because again you know going into this relationship with three kids i i definitely had a lot of pushback from a lot of uh family and friends as far as you know, there's plenty of women out there without kids. And, you know, that's a big responsibility. Why would you want to do that? You know, what's wrong with you to want to step in and, and take on that responsibility, you know, and, you know, um, you know, what was the, the, the other one that I heard of, you know, she's not looking to, to have you raise her kids, is she, you know, when I when we first started dating, and that was, to be honest, I've, I've thought about that. And, I don't know how you could date someone that has kids without a little bit of like, this is a huge responsibility. And I really have to think of the weight of that. <laughs> right. You know, because I think that again, if you're going to, if you're going to date someone with kids, you kind of have to have a mindset of I'm putting everything I have into this. I can't half ass this, you know, I'm going to definitely have to have 
some participation in the growth of these kids, right?